The Beer and Pretzel Podcast and Trash Talk Podcast are part of the Butt Wide, though, and Podfix Networks. Check them out to hear more content from other great podcasters. Hello. Hello. Leah. No. Hello. Hello. My name is Austin. And my name is Leah. And this is the Beer and Pretzel podcast. Uh, like four weeks ago for our Valentine's Day special, we were here doing a special Valentine's Day episode for Star Cross, the game about forbidden love. And then we got drunk and couldn't finish the episode. So we didn't get to finish it. But we've had other episodes since then, so this is a very late part two episode, but hopefully you've enjoyed the episode since then. We've talked to, or at least I've talked to Alex Roberts, who is the creator of this game, and also Hero Dog Saves the World, which is another actual play episode that we've released since then, playing her game about a dog and his team of TV show writers as they attempt to come up with the best season finale for a show about a dog that goes town to town, saving, well, saving the town. So, uh, yeah, so recently we've been playing all Alex Roberts games, Starcross and Hero Dog Saves the Town. Also, recently I've interviewed um, the guy Luke Lucas, I think, who is the creator of Pirate Borg, which is the new Kickstarter, um, which is a pirate themed Mork Borg uh, game. So we've had some other episodes since then. But now let's get actually to the finale. Leah, what do you remember from like four weeks ago about our characters? Or what do you remember from our last session? <laughs> when you asked me that, I was like, wait, I, I remember it's just having some drinks. and then... Yeah, we had a lot of drinks. <laughs> what did you even drink? Was it wine or was it like a mixed drink? I don't even remember. Uh, Beer? I don't even remember. Oh, it was cider. It was cider? Is that it? Yeah, the the whole bottle was oh, cider. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So this time we're back. We got some strawberry margaritas. We're trying to make this a little bit romantic, even though Valentine's Day was over a month ago at this point. Uh, it's actually one month exactly. Is it? Is it the 14th? It's no, it's the 15th. Oh, it's only the 15th because it's past midnight. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's kind of funny. <laughs> I did not plan this. So we're having some strawberry margaritas, but this time, no matter what, we will be finishing this episode, be it if the tower falls or not. Because if you did not listen to the first part of this episode, which you should, this is a game about forbidden love, about two characters who really, really want to get together but cannot, and we use a Jenga tower instead of dice or cards. So in this, let's introduce before we get back into the game, because it's been a little bit, we should get back into our who our characters are. My character is Norman Dixon, the 399th. I'm a fly, and what is my most attractive feature? My exquisite, slimy top hat. So I'm a fat, chubby uh, fly flying around the swamps of, I think, South Carolina or North Carolina. I forgot what state we One set this in. Yeah, it was a while ago. And for what are two features about me that I don't realize are attractive, Leah, you wrote for me, um, besides my eyes, I like how sharp uh, my whiskers are, and you also like the sound of my chubby flying as I fly through the air going whiz, 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 whiz as I can't keep myself up for too long. Why can't I act on my feelings towards you? Because I know that Mr. Needle, who Leah's going to be introduced in a second, will eat me eventually. And why is that important to me? Because I'm waiting on the birth of Norman Dixon, the 400th. I have a lady wife, uh, Mrs. Dixon, I guess. And we are very excited for the 400th member of the Dixon lineage. So I want to remain alive till then. So besides, you know, want to not die just because I don't want to die. I want to make it to the birth of my future son. <laughs> But I guess I'm having a little bit of a secret affair with <laughs> Mr. Needle, who Leah's about to go over. Okay, my name is uh, Mr. Wounded Needle. Um, I'm a plant. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm the Venus flytrap, which is a plant. And the what's more, my most attractive feature is my smell. I smell like a skunk. So apparently that's a good thing. For me, it is. Oh, yeah. Um, also, the... 
yeah and the things i'm not i don't realize i'm attractive is what you said my strong green stocks <laughs> yeah and your um, i don't know my my bite reflects yeah so your bite reflex even though i've seen you chat on very quickly a quick bite on other insects worms and maybe flies for some reason my guy's like damn that's kind of hot <laughs> For some reason, yeah, and why I can't act on my feelings is because it's hard not to see you as a food, of course, because you're a fly. A chubby fly at a that. Chubby, a chubby, chubby fly. Why is that important to me? Because you look so good and yummy. That's fair. Okay, so in this game, we do a couple scenes and at different points we pull from the tower if the tower falls we have to act on our feelings but if we don't get through enough of our characters moves then something negative happens but if we can do as much as we can with the scenes that we have something will good will happen with this relationship this is scene three finding common ground which is the theme of this scene um apologize to my speech as I've had like two or three margaritas since uh, we prepared for this game. Also, this is a new dice tower or a new tower since the cat knocked over our tower since we stopped like a month ago. So we've rebuilt it, but we have taken out the same exact number of blocks that we did the other time. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is a better looking tower or worse tower from the other time that we played, but it's the same amount of blocks that has been pulling out. Uh, Leah, what's your opinion on the tower that we've pulled out today? Oh, I don't know. I don't think we're going to make it until the end, mm. for sure. But we will try. All right. Scene three, finding common ground. Norman Dixon, the 399th. I make my stroll through the bayou. I make my uh, rounds. I go out to get food for the family. I probably have at least a dozen or so kids I need to feed and need to bring back the bacon for my family. And I'm not sure what flies eat for the family or what they bring back, but I go on my little trip. I bring my little suitcase and I go out. But I could take the shortcut home, but I always take at least of a week ago because flies don't live very long. So a week for me is probably years in human life. I take the longer way around going past the Venus flytrap that not only scares me, but attracts for me. And that is Mr. Wounded Needle, the Venus flytrap. I go by one day, hoping to get a glimpse of you and maybe to engage you in conversation. And I see you chowing down on a fly. Not someone in my family, but a fly. So I guess in my close enough family, you just chowing down and slowly digesting it into your stomach. And when I came over here, I came with the intention of engaging in conversation with you. Maybe starting a little flirt flirt. Okay. But instead I come over and I'm just pissed off. Mr. Wounded Needle, we've been talking for days and you go out and you eat someone that looks just like me. Uh, yes, because it's how, uh, it's what I do. And normally, I, I thought like our conversations have been more meaningful. Uh, it was. And then why did you eat someone that looks very similar to me? I, I don't know that man personally, but he's probably a neighbor in this mile of swamp. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, speaking of which, that's a rule I need to be <laughs> implemented more. In this game, when you talk, your characters have dialogue. You're supposed to put one hand on the tower. You can't put your elbow down to stabilize it, but it's just to make it so that your conversation is short because you don't want to actually knock the tower over. Okay, so that's something we got to do more. Uh, but yeah, how do you respond to that, Leah? Okay. <laughs> so I want to teach. Yeah, uh, so just one of those pieces. Yep. Okay. You can touch anywhere on the tower. Okay, um, okay, um. <laughs> <laughs> is that the sound your character makes, or is that just the sound you're making? <laughs> Both. Yeah. <laughs> Norman it's, Dixon. Norman Dixon, I'm sorry. I just, I, I, I knew your name. I just wanted to make sure it was the right name. <laughs> and the right fly. <laughs> no. Do you think I was that fly you just digested in your stomach? <laughs> 
I knew this wasn't you. The thing is, it's nothing personal, you know? It's not like I met one fly and I want to stop eating just because. Right? And I guess, yeah, that's a fair point, I guess. But, like, this world is full of hundreds, if not thousands, of species that are similar in size to me. And you have to eat a fly out of everything, especially when you knew that I usually try and make my rounds and come by to talk to you on this day at this time. You couldn't have waited an hour for me to leave. First of all, I'm not judging what you eat or what you don't. So I feel free to eat or to do what you want. And I'm going to do the same. Okay, that's fair. But I don't eat Venus fly traps because I'm not, I can't do that. That's not my thing. I don't eat what you eat, and I don't eat anything that looks anything like you. Uh, this is normally the best part of my day when I come by on my way after picking up some food for the family and my wife, and I close my mouth quickly as this is the first time I've ever revealed to you that I am in a relationship with someone that's other than you. Doing so means I intentionally reveal something personal. Actually, that. I think my character would have unintentionally done that. But it doesn't matter. I reveal something personal about myself. I'm going to shade in one of these stars. And I'm going to take a pull from this very... Oh, sh the shaky tower. <laughs> also, doesn't it help that we play this game on, like, the worst room in our apartment? Because this whole apartment, especially this room in our bedroom, is super slanted. So playing Jenga on a table that's, like, super slanted is very difficult. But I pulled it off. Okay. Uh, so I revealed something personal about myself. How does your character respond or think about the fact that I reveal to you that I have a family, kids, and a wife? Does your character care, or what, what do you think? Uh, first, well, I'm so happy for you, and I didn't <laughs> know that you had a family, which is good. It's good. I feel happy for you, but at the same time... In my innermost, <laughs> my innermost desire, <laughs> or my my heart is just breaking apart. But I won't reveal that to you, which is just okay. Heartbreaking. Okay, so my character doesn't know that. No, it doesn't know. You don't know. Do you, do I see it? Maybe. On well, you don't really have a face, but and anyway, you only need to put your hand on the tower if your character is speaking. Okay. So if your character doesn't say anything to me, you don't have to do that. Um, does my you don't have really a face for me to gauge emotions? But am I even though you don't say anything? Am I able to maybe see on you that maybe you are a little sad? If and do if you can find a way to do so, that would be unintentionally revealing something about yourself. <laughs> I can yes. Well, okay, well, describe to us, how, Evo, you don't tell me that you're heartbroken and a little sad about this. How do I maybe get the sense that you are? Maybe because my lips are kind of falling. Yeah. A little bit falling down. And my silence is... Ooh. <laughs> I hope you Silence is I killer. I you care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that's, that's sad. That's heartbreaking. Uh, okay. So there you go, and try to knock one off the tower. At this point, our tower is okay. It's not shaking super hard, but once again, this room is like so slanted that this tower could fall over, even though the tower isn't horrible. Like anytime you touch right now, it's like bobbling yeah, a really bit. All right. So while you try to take off some from the tower, I'll keep going. So there's some silence. Your leaves kind of like droop down a little bit. And I was like, damn, I said something bad. So we're kind of in this awkward situation that you upset me by eating a fly. And I upset you by revealing something about my Your family. family. Yeah. And kids. And kids, yeah. And I take off my top hat. This isn't the time to look exquisite and handsome. It's the time to be humble and honest. And I tell you straight up that... My family, yes, I have a wife and kids, but that's kind of not really the passion or love of my life. It's kind of 
my role in life is as a fly, we live very short lives compared to you or other creatures in this world. So we need to find a partner quickly and reproduce and reproduce a lot so we can continue our species. So maybe for you, relationships have more meaning, but for me, it's just a part of life is the only way for my species, not my family, but my species to survive. Are you revealing that to me or? I reveal that to you, but I can only do that once per scene. So I tell you that, but I'm not going to pull from the scene. But I will tell you this while I go over and put one of my little, my little antennas or little arms on you. Like I'm comforting you. And I do that even though I saw a fly was eaten by you. So I'm showing that I have a lot of trust in you because I'm going so close. I'm putting my little, my little... I, I don't know what their legs are called. Legs. Flies. It was yeah, just legs. I put one of my little arms or legs on you to comfort you. Even though I'm very close, you could, with your really fast reflexes, eat me. But I do this to show that I'm being honest with you and that I don't fear you and I trust you. And doing so, I intentionally touch the follow. Ugh. All right. So, um, I oh, that was actually an easy pull. Oh, wow. That worked really good for me. Yep. What do you think about this? What does your character think about what I said about... My character totally understands what you s just said. I guess it's just trying to uh, understand how your nature is just it's just different. It doesn't have to be the same for me. Hmm. And totally fine with that. It's um, what I guess the only... Uh, thing i could my only um, hope is just having you around even if i can have you neither as mm. a meal nor as a lover <laughs> oh jeez well that's good so at this point maybe we talk a little bit more about it but i think we need to get to the topic of the scene which is finding common ground once again, we come back to this situation where I want to talk to your character about go. So, okay, I guess that's fair. I this this kind of interesting because I revealed Nate something about the nature of flies, and you revealed something about the nature of Venus fly traps that you need to eat. Mm -hmm. If flies are an important part of your diet, I go. Okay, you need to eat, and you eat meat, but do you have to eat flies? So, like. Are you able to digest and do you enjoy eating other insects, worms or centipedes and other, you know, bumblebees or whatever? You don't just eat only flies, right? Mm, not necessarily. Bugs in general. The thing is, flies are the most easiest. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? What are you saying? You calling us stupid? <laughs> calling us stupid? How about what about worms? Worms I know from personal experience from talking to them. Those motherfuckers are dumb as hell. How about if I was able to lower? And I kind of feel bad about doing this, but how about if I lowered some worms or wasps or bees or you know any kind of bug that's not a fly? How about if I lowered it towards you? I'm my profession is as a salesperson, so I have the way the voice. <laughs> you shouldn't uh, say that. I should have said that for a different scene where I could have revealed something about myself. Oh, well. Um, yeah, a fly salesperson. I just think because he's got the hat. <laughs> How about if I use my gift of gab to lure someone near you that you can eat them? Mm -hmm. Would you stop trying to eat flies if I brought you at least twice a day some kind of meal? Oh, I understand also how you feel hurt um, being or seeing, watching how your people is being eaten. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if you could do that for me, I'm totally open, you know? Okay. Oh, yeah, open, because <laughs> I'm going to open my mind. <laughs> <laughs> of yeah. Course. So, um, but you agree, though, that you won't eat anyone like me if I bring you upper meals. Mm, I I 
I could try it. Okay. I think our characters found common ground and we beat this scene. All right. Uh, great job. I'm trying to look at your character sheet to see if you did anything else. You didn't intentionally touch the lead. You didn't intentionally reveal something personal. Touch? Yeah, you touched me. No, you. I did, but not you. Oh, okay. Yeah, so my character sheet is more filled up than yours. So you have to make sure you do more of yours soon. Okay. Mm. Leah, what is scene four? Zoom for hard at work. Oh, I know what I'm hard at work for. So over the next two days, I struggle but eventually succeed in something that's very difficult at work, but not my normal uh, nine to five job. It is my new job of bringing people to you. So I keep going. Hey, I got a deal for you, Mr. Worm. Hey, I got a deal for you, Mr. Wasp. I'm going to get you some prime real estate for very cheap. Just it's a different part of town, but we're pretty much giving away these homes for free. You just, you got to come with me and I lure them to you where the idea is that you'll eat them. I guess it, uh, since the scene is hard at work, what is difficult about this? Like what is difficult about getting you to eat them? I wonder. Mm, I guess I doubt how the flavor is going to be, how different, um, mm. how could I get used to, to the new um, bugs or for the new people yeah, cause, you're bringing me. Because you are a Venus flytrap. It's in the name that you eat flies, but they do eat other bugs. Yeah. But you are probably more used to and you enjoy maybe more eating flies. Yeah. And then so, yeah, I'm just I'm pretty much... Um, I could just do it. So it's just trying to um, change my diet. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if flies are more fattening. I wonder if you will lose weight by eating other bugs, mm. like worms and stuff. Or, or maybe I could just gain weight. Or I wonder if I that could change my, uh, I don't know the 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 shape of my body. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Or my the color of my leaves. Yeah, it could. maybe that could change. Yeah, if you're only eating like worms, maybe your leaves turn like more of a yellow color. Yeah, not sure. I, I'm not a biologist. <laughs> no. Um, I hope you bring good food. <laughs> I bring the best food I can get, which is dumb worms, and I don't know why I can't think of any bug that's not a worm. Uh, bees, caterpillar, caterpillars. Yeah, oh, dude, I bring fat, sad. chubby caterpillars, <laughs> little like the little cute furry ones, yeah. the woolly bears. I bring those over for you, but maybe that's kind of gross, maybe for you, because it's like a, it's like having like a sock go down your mouth, because like how furry they are, how you know? Furry, yeah, or maybe like, you like it. I don't know. Maybe it's just good for my teeth. <laughs> yeah, it like cleans out your teeth sort yeah, of because you get those like hard bristles. It's like a toothbrush kind of. Yeah, except maybe. it's screaming on the inside. <laughs> um. So for me, so that's your hard at work. For me, this being a hard thing is that it's hard for me emotionally to keep doing this every day, like twice a day, having to trick people into coming here for you to eat them. So let's set the scene. This is the end of the day. You've gone your full of the day. Uh, you've eaten me two or three times. I brought two or three different um, beings to you that you ate. And the sun is going down. I need to leave soon to go back to my family. But I wipe some sweat off my brow. And I guess we engage a little bit of a conversation before I have to leave. <sighs> wow, that was a tough day. And that was only the first I needed it. Put my hands on the tower. That was a tough day, and this is only day one. But I'm committed to doing this. Uh, do you know why? Um, tell me. Um, I'm committed to doing this because when I was young, my father, which was uh, Norman Dixon, the three hundred and nine hundred. Wait, no, Wait, three. Eight. No, yeah. No, 300, no, no, because I've had other kids. No, 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 I guess that's true. Uh, Norman Dixon, the 398th, he was actually eaten by a Venus flytrap. Ooh. Ooh. I intentionally revealed so something about myself. I'm going to scrabble that in. Uh, so that is why I'm having a hard time doing this, because I saw someone that looks very much like you eat my father. Oh, no. 
So, and I did that. Okay, there we go. But, uh, so, it's not really about that. Because I understand everyone needs to eat. The hard part for me, though, is that I am purposely bringing other creatures, even if they don't look like me, to their death. I don't know if I'm doing this for a good reason, or maybe I should just let nature be nature. If I just sit in silence for a minute. Well, when you re once you reveal that that part, I could just um, well trying to process <laughs> what you just said. It's kind of sad what uh, about your dad, but maybe I have some memories about your dad. Mm. <laughs> are you about to unintentionally reveal something to me because that could be a good segue yeah all right uh what are you going to say or what are you going to unintentionally reveal well so this has to be kind of like an accident uh do i have to say it because so far it's just in my mind and i'm not sure if i have to if i could say it or not because how well you to reveal react? it you have to like reveal it so even if it's by accident. You don't need to just tell the whole story. We need to reveal something unintentionally. Um, okay. <laughs> Norman, <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> no. I go, oh no. <sighs> when Norma Dixon says that, it's never good. <laughs> no, I don't think it's also good in this case. Um... I had what? eaten your dad. What? I had eaten your dad. You? Your dad was eaten by me. And I'm so sorry. I I I didn't meet you by that time. And I just realized how, that that was that was your dad. How do you, how do you know it was him? It, maybe it was a different fly. How do you know that? Because he was exactly like you, and that the same. In what the way? Same, the same fly, the same, the same sound he made. Well, don't generalize about all flies. Maybe we all sound like this. Mm, I've been living in this place for, for more than fifty years, and I I know that that was your dad. Oh my gosh. All right, Leah, that was good. Unintentional reveal of something personal. Uh, pull from the tower, and if you are able to complete it, mark off a star on your character sheet. There we go. Good. Wait. No. There you go. No, it is. Oh my gosh. Um,. My character is going to, you know, on this character sheet, it says my character intentionally touches the follow, but it doesn't say I have to touch you romantically. Mm -hmm. So I am going to go up and even though it's not going to hurt you because you're so much bigger for me and stronger for me, I'm going to take my very teeny tiny little hands, ball them up into little fists, and I'm going to go, do, 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 and not like punch your hard stalks, which is something that you said before I'm attracted to. But I'm gonna punch you right in your side, and I'm gonna intentionally touch you. But this time, I'm not doing it in a romantic way or to make you feel better about yourself. I'm doing it to express my pain, is what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to pull from the tower. Ooh, oh, this tower is oh. The sides are pretty full, but like when I no, touch them, the whole no. tower shakes so much. Um, this is difficult. Okay. You know, if I the tower falls here, it would probably make sense that you would just eat me at this point. But we gotta go for that when we get there. Oh my god, like the sides are like full, but I can't press on them without maybe I can try the other side. Leah, I don't know if I can do this actually. <laughs> So I'm going to grab oh, no. one of the support beams at the bottom, which is not good. But it's like the only one that's going to move. Wow. Okay, I got it. Wow. But definitely on that section, we're not pulling anymore. Okay. Why? I can't believe it. 
yeah, the whole like tower is now held up by like one single block. <laughs> And the rest of it's still really rickety too. Okay, so I intentionally touch you by punch you many times, but really light punches with my little tiny arms. Um, what I'm I'm trying is also trying to touch you just because I want to. I'm afraid, like you, and I fly away. I'm never coming back, oh, and I just want to f feel you physically. Mm how how you are um the sh the shape of your body feeling you trying to feel in you as much as i can and i know so and after that i'm going to i'm going to try to explain you why i did that even if i mean pretty much you know you mm. cuz our family, me, everybody around me eat uh, eat flies, which um, is pretty much part of our nature. And um, I, I is not is there is nothing I can change. So, but a sad part is like I had the chance in my life to meet you which was the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. And the past, I can't change. But the present, I can do something, which is I'm about to explain it. That's it's very good. Is what I'm going to say. Okay. Um, so you said you wanted to touch me, right? Yeah. To make me feel better. So I think that would be your once per game intentionally touching the lead. Which makes sense, because it was an accident. You were intentionally trying to touch me to try to make me feel better, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And so, yeah. Evan, explain oh. to me about everything like that, which that is uh, very sad, very heartbreaking. We're going on a very emotional roller coaster with this episode. I love it. Yeah, the tower right now is a mess. What? I think technically, <laughs> Leah, I think you're not allowed to grab the top two no? layers. I'm pretty sure in the rules it says that that the top layer and the second most layer you're not allowed to touch. Okay. Because it's like the easy ones, basically. Yeah, I know it's difficult. So I guess while you do that, unless you knock the tower over, my character hears all that, and Evo, I came from a uh, a place of anger after hearing this information. I <laughs> am. Oh, good job. <laughs> I do feel a little bit better just because you explained to me, like, how, like, everything you wish you could have met me at that point, and that makes me feel better, and, like, it's really messed up that I'm interested in someone that ate my father, but we've been going on a roller coaster of emotions discussing nature and who we are as beings that aren't similar to each other, so I guess I kind of have to accept that, and... Unless you have any other things you want to add, I think this is a perfect ending to hard at work scene. As I fly away, maybe your character thinks that you'll never see me again, but I eventually will come back. But we're going to see what happens at that point in scene five, which is... In scene five, close, quiet, and alone. Close, quiet, and alone. <laughs> Why does it sound like something sad? <laughs> well, I guess it's a perfect time to go to a sad point. Close, quiet, and alone. Ooh, I don't even know what to do with that. So, I guess this scene will start as I am the lead. This scene starts in a quiet area of the swamp. Kind of close to you. Actually, within sight. You see me, but while you're like a little bit in from the swamp, in an area that's like not just swamp water, like there's... Uh, dirt and you know weeds and plants you're probably like i don't know five feet away from the water i go by you so that you know i'm there but i sit by the water by myself close quiet and alone oh, yeah. and i don't know if i'm like purposely being emo <laughs> like being close to you but not talking to you like i know you're there and you know I'm there, but I am sitting there alone. And while you can see me, and you can talk to me, 
as a plant, you aren't able to move closer to me. I am mm-hmm. like five feet away from you. I think that's it for me. I think my character is not going to say anything. He's just going to pout and be sad by the water. And yeah, that's how the scene is going to start. The thing is, I don't think I could add anything else besides what I just just said. Mm. So I just hope you're going to understand eventually. And uh, by the time goes, um, <laughs> well, I guess shorter for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you're going to still alive. <laughs> you're yeah. going to be. <laughs> and we're going to have the chance to hang, in, hang around again. I am going to get up. As the sun starts setting, I'm going to start flying home. And a hard wind is going to come through the area and push me. And while I was flying on a beeline home, the wind pushes me because I'm a little fly and, you know, I don't have much weight. The harsh wind comes and pushes me straight into your body. Inside of my mouth. Um, I wasn't thinking that, but let's do it. Let's do that. I, yeah, I am going to fly accidentally into your mouth. Doing so, I'm going to do my once per game ability of unintentionally touching the lead, as I was not meaning to do this, but the wind pushed me hard into it. So I'm going to unintentionally touch you by flying straight into your mouth. Oh my gosh, this tower is a mess. Do you have any suggestions of where I should pull from? Like, there's, like, a couple areas that it's, like, a whole three blocks, like, haven't been touched, but, like, they won't yeah. move. No. Oh. No. Oh, no. E- no. I'm, like, pushing no. out slowly as, like, oh, no. And I pulled it Whoa. off. Wow. Wow. That was tough. Okay. <laughs> so, I pull it off. I fly right into you unintentionally as the wind kicked me into your mouth. And I just stay there. In a second of horror, looking at you as I am inside your mouth like I my father was a year ago or whenever it was. Yeah. I feel like this scene has been kind of a slow motion. Because even if the wind is a strong and the time is just, you know, passing. And in... How am I feeling in this moment? Is just being in shock. With, like my body is trying to react as always does. Mm, but that's true. My <laughs> uh, what? I, but it's totally the the opposite. Of what I really want. Of course, yeah. I and mean, I'm just I'm just trying to. I'm just fighting. I'm just fighting against myself. Trying to fight the urge to just go. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. <laughs> and I'm like, no, this is not what I want. No. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's, yeah. Same so your face, character is like, like fighting father. hard against like every part of your urges in nature to not just go to town on me. Do you say anything to me or do you just keep your mouth open so I can fly out of you? At this point, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying really, really hard to open my mouth. Okay. I will fly out quickly and then look at you and I'm in disbelief and I go, you, I, I froze, but you didn't eat me. Uh, I broke your wing. You broke my wing. Yeah, part of your wing was stuck in my mouth. I look over and now I notice that, yeah, part of my wing is indeed stuck in your mouth. And I am having a hard time flying. Right now it's like a real struggle. And I actually have to float to the ground and land next to you as I'm not able to carry my weight for too long. I go, oh no, what am I going to do? I I have a long distance to get home and I I lost part of my wing in yeah, your teeth. Because my body reacted faster than you know my in your brain. My, my, okay. Or your heart kind, I guess. Like, yeah. yeah, something like that, I guess. Uh, what am I gonna do? <sighs> the sun is going down and there's no way I can make it home in time. 
Yeah. I wonder how old are you by then. Um, I forgot how long flies can live, but I'm definitely an adult fly of whatever that entails. Mm, so how long is just left for you? Like oh. days or? Um, I think when we did it last time, I think I established I had like two weeks left yeah. of like an average lifespan. Yeah, I think like two weeks so, like, I guess, like, if I was a human age, I guess I would be, like, in my 60s, maybe. Yeah, it was time. <laughs> no. <laughs> what am I going to do? I then tell you, intentionally revealing something about you, that I know that I don't have a long life to live, but I am trying to make it to my son's birth, which is Norman Dixon of 400th. And I will feel like I've accomplished something in my life if I could have been the father oh, and wait. been there. You said you had kids and your wife. I did. Oh, maybe I didn't have kids. Maybe <laughs> just a wife. All right, let's go back on that. I only have a wife. <laughs> Deleted. Yeah, Deleted. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what I was talking about. I was drunk. Um... The birth of my first son, which is Norman Dixon, the 400th, which my wife is pregnant with, and she's bound to give birth any day. And I have to make it home eventually so that I have the chance to see that. Intentionally revealing something about myself. Oh. Time to take a poll. Leah, you need to be the next one to pull from this tower because I, oh, this uh -oh. is not fair that I'm the only one that's pulling from this tower because this is a mess. Which is wait, surprising because it doesn't look that bad. Can I pull it from the front? Oh, there we go. Aha. I pulled from the front. Wait, when I touched you unintentionally, but because of the wind, I don't think I did this. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Anymore. While I unintentionally touched you, you... Here, right? Yes. Okay. That's true. Yeah. I unintentionally touched you and you unintentionally touched me perfect uh right now we're filling up those stars yeah because basically if i didn't say this last time we played the more stars we fill up the better our character's relationship outcome just because the tower falls doesn't mean that i die or anything like the popular role-playing game dread where when a tower falls basically characters disposed of or killed in some way because that's a horror-based role of play uh role-playing game in this game yeah the story ends and depending on how many stars you fill up, maybe ends poorly or maybe something good happens with this relationship. The more stars we fill up, the better the outcome. So you're not going for that one that's sticking out? No. I feel like it's enough. Okay, that's fair. Um, oh my Jesus. gosh, the tower's shaking. There we go. Good stuff. Okay. <sighs> I look at you and I say... What do you think I should do, no, Mr. Wounded Needle? In your opinion, what should I do tonight? You could wait. <laughs> uh, wait till right the morning? <laughs> yeah. No, but I wouldn't say that. I'm just going to say, you could stay here. Um, because you are not in physically in a good condition to Why? make it home. Yeah, maybe my wings will regrow by the morning. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, they will. Where can I sleep for the night? In my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that would normally be no, the no, stupidest no, I thing ever. <laughs> well, the thing is that, like, there are other predators that would eat me at night. So maybe in your mouth, if you don't actually eat me, that might I be the safest. <laughs> All right, then I guess I won't. No. I will sleep on top of your head then. Yeah, because you could do that. I'm going to curl up in a little ball, and I'm going to sleep on top of your head. And the end of the night is close, quiet, but not alone. <laughs> as scene five ends, as we move on to scene six, we're doing good. We're on our <laughs> third to last scene. Maybe there's a chance we'll beat this game after all. What is scene three or uh, scene six? six? A disagreement becomes heated. Oof. Okay. Interesting. <sighs> okay, what do you think the disagreement could be about? What is our disagreement? Oh, okay. Here we go. The next day, I waddle home. I thank you for spending time together, and we share a 
very brief but romantic look at each other before I leave, and I promise you I will be back. It's like we have spent the night together. We did, kind <laughs> of, yeah. No, well, no, we did, literally. And I make it home. My fly wings has been growing, so I've been able to fly in very short spurts, and maybe I waddle a little bit on the ground to get home. I eventually get there, and you eventually see me, but not till two or three days later. This hmm. is the first time in a while that you haven't seen me for multiple days. I usually always see you once per day. My idea multiple times per day. Actually. Multiple times per day. Here's the ideas I have going. We can go with both of these or none of these. My idea is when I eventually see you again, the disagreement could be that you haven't seen me multiple days. And you know, that's a lot of my lifespan. So that makes you sad. And maybe I also have a disagreement with you because I see when I come back, you're eating another fly. Oh <gasps> uh, yeah. You wanna do that? Yeah, because you are not bringing me food. I don't see it that way, though. I come back. I have a new top hat on. I have a little bow tie. And I'm happy as can be because I want to tell you the good news. Oh. My wife gave birth to Norman Dixon the 400th. <laughs> I filled my purpose in life. But when I come back, after wanting to show you my new wing that's grown, and maybe show you a little hand picture I drew of my son... I am disappointed and mad because I see you once again <laughs> digesting a fly. What the fuck? What happened to our agreement? On. <laughs> what? What happened? Mm -hmm. I was looking forward to seeing you today. I I didn't I didn't know you were still around. You know. I thought you were gone. <laughs> no, Done. I. No, it just took me a while to get home, and it took a day or two for my wing to regrow. But as soon as it did, I made it all the way here. I throw down a little picture in front of you of my son. The thing I was proud about, I and I want to show you <laughs> to make you happy. But it may be say you are proud of me or congratulate me or something. But I'm pissed off because you ate another fly after our agreement that was going to bring you food. Yeah, but the thing is... The thing is, um, you since uh, how do you expect I'm gonna stop eating? Just, 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 just since I don't have more supplies, you know. <laughs> but you couldn't wait after our lovely night together. You couldn't wait two days, two or three days for me to come back. I was planning on bringing you food once my wing regrew. For me, the time goes faster, so it's not like I can. I have the the rest of my life just I'm I'm not gonna be waiting no that, mm. that doesn't make any sense to me uh, I'm happy to see you though mm. <sighs> my character is pissed off and you're probably upset too because it's been a couple of days since you see me yeah I just came here to be to make such a thing like Instead of just uh, mm, having a good time, you're just being kind of dramatic. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I am going to intentionally touch the follow by going over to you and trying to grab your mouth. The thing that I've had kind of a little bit of attraction to. But this time I'm going to try to pull your mouth open to rescue the fly that's inside you intentionally touching the follow. So I'm going to pull from the tap. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no. I went for that one that you didn't want because I thought it was the easy one. No, that's okay, so something's going to happen okay, after yeah. I try to pull this other fly out of your mouth. <laughs> um, I guess that's going to be ending the game, but we got to go into what happens with our relationship. Uh, Leah, let's count up our stars and see what we got, what our score is. Well, uh, first of all, there were two more scenes. Again. Yeah, we didn't get to do those scenes. That's okay. Um, it's not always about beating the scenes. It's about the story of our relationship. But how well did our relationship turn out? Count your stars. We're going to compare it to mine, and then we're going to see what happens. How many you have? Six? I have three and three. And one. And um, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
one more. Seven, then. Seven. I have nine. So together we have 16. Um, going down to the chart, which is, I think it's called the, in this game, the resolution phase. If the tower falls, the epilogue phase. Um, when you tear yourself away from the climax of your story, move to the epilogue. Combine the number of filled stars on each of your character sheets. This represents your attraction score. Compare um, your attraction score to the epilogue chart on the next page and use the corresponding result the same way you use the text on scene cards as an inspiration and a constraint. Okay. The roles of lead and follow are set aside for now. The dance is over. Together, we shall tell the end of our character's stories. What do they finally say to each other? What still goes unsaid? What do they do? Where do they go? Indulge in scenic descriptions and sensual details. This is the final finale to your story. With 16 points... We barely missed out on uh, attraction score of 17 through 19. We got into the 14 to 16 range of an uneasy intimacy. Ooh. So we didn't miss out. We did do better than passion burns bright but fizzles out or it wasn't the right time. So we got an uneasy intimacy. Okay, Leah, this is the final scene. An uneasy intimacy is how our character's story ends. So, I so you're not going to eat me, I don't think. But how does our story kind of fizzle out into an uneasy intimacy? I guess our intimate moments were all the moments we s spent together but with also, me inside your mouth. <laughs> but, no, but also reveal uh, some something about each other yeah we revealed a lot to each other we've learned a bunch from each other but i guess now wasn't the time and we did have some intimate moments together no uh, of uh spending time at night together a, w a couple of ones yeah a couple ones yeah but i guess we didn't get to go as far as we wanted mm. or at least you wanted yeah, because we couldn't. No. Is that just because nature thinks that Venus flytrap and a fly can't get together? Or is it just how the dice rolled poorly in our favors for this particular fly in Venus flytrap? Or it was our personalities. Or maybe it was our personalities. <laughs> but it does say we have an intimacy together. Just it was an uneasy intimacy mm. so i guess Makes what sense. what is our final scene together then i guess um, i guess i tried to pull over your mouth and i'm not able to rescue the fly inside do you react poorly to me try to force my way into your mouth <laughs> yeah yeah like, and uh, like, what is it that sends me on my way <laughs> for the it, to the point that you never see me again? First of all, were you close to me at that point? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was like right on you, trying to pull your mouth open. Well, I have, I have two, um, two kind of endings. Okay. First, uh, first it could be me eating you just mm -hmm. because I don't, I, I. I know you. You have your family, and and I. I just want you. I want to have you just for myself. Even if it's <laughs> in your belly. Even if it's in my belly. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Okay. It's kind of Something... intimate in its own way. I guess that could be its own uneasy intimacy. It doesn't <laughs> say necessarily that you don't eat me. Uh -huh. Okay. What's your other idea? The other one is just letting you go. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to uh, just, well, just thinking about like it's this is this is what we have, and I'm just gonna be fine with this, and it's okay. Jeez, that's sad. <laughs> Both of these kind of sad in their own way endings. I guess, 
I don't know, Leah, you're the guest on this. I think I'm going to let you make the final choice between those two scenes. Both of those are good endings for this, but I'll let you choose. I have one more. One more? Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it could be also besides letting you go and waiting for your son. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you mean? To eat him? <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> I like to the first two. Waiting for the chance to meet him. Oh, okay. He eventually comes back for revenge to try to get you. Or maybe he could have the same semblance. Yeah, the same resemblance. Yeah. Resemblance and you, so... Are you saying you want to... <laughs> are you trying to bone my son? <laughs> Is that what you're trying to do? <laughs> so what happens to me in this scenario? Eventually you're going to die. Jeez. It is, it is what it is. It's true. Do I die of natural causes of old age or do yeah. I die? Do you eat me? Yeah. It's, I have said that. Yeah. I've said that. Yeah. Like twice. Those two. First. The first two? Yeah. The first two was the first one was eating you. And the second one was... He's letting was, you go. Yeah. And... You're just gonna die with your family, which it's gonna it's it's gonna be your choice, you know. Okay. Because you're the one, the one who can fly. So mm. if you have your family, I'm just staying there. Jeez. So I'm going to fail at pull another fly out, and I'm gonna take one more look at you. And I, I'm sad that this didn't work out, but. I appreciate the time we spent together. It was probably the highlight of my very short life besides the birth of my son as there was more connection between me and you, even with our arguments, than me with my Norma Dixon wife <laughs> yeah. at any point. So while there was some nice intimacy together there, I have to go back and be with my <laughs> born son and raise him. He needs a father, so I realized in that moment that your nature will not allow you to not eat me or mm -hmm. eat other flies in general, I guess. You'll not stop, and I'm going to tip my top hat and say goodbye oh, yeah. to you, and I'm going to fly off to view my family before, I don't know, a couple of days or a week, I'll eventually die. Mm -hmm. um, that's the end of my character story. What does your character think or do or anything as you see me fly away what's going for your venus flytrap mind um i'm gonna be happy what what we had because it was it was something special but it was just for that uh, part of my life mm. which now is I'm gonna keep going because <laughs> yeah. as a plant, I have short memory. So, if, or so eventually, I'm gonna forget about it. Jeez, it's dark. Like you uh, forgot about my father eating him. <laughs> I had some flashbacks, so yeah, that's what I <laughs> yeah. Right then, you remembered, yeah. Well, that was nice. This was a story of Norma, no, Norman Dixon, the 399th, and Mr. Wounded Needle. A love story of forbidden love between a Venus flytrap and a house fly. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this episode of Star Cross, Episode 2 by the Beer and Pretzel Podcast. And thanks to my lovely fiance, Leah, for joining me on this show about forbidden love. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you very <laughs> much for playing. I know uh, this isn't your normal wheelhouse of games, but I'm glad you played, and I think you did a very really good job. I had so, fun. I'm glad you did. <laughs> I was a lot better company playing with you than playing this game with Travis. I tell you that. <laughs> I'm Wait, you, should, you should do another for me for the next year, maybe, maybe. I was actually thinking that. I was like thinking maybe <laughs> next year for Valentine's Day special episode, uh, forcing Travis to play this game with me. But I don't know. Travis is the most romantic guy in the world. 
So we'll see about that. But yeah, once again, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, got a lot of good episodes coming out in the future. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed the episode, uh, the best way to support the show is to recommend us to a friend or leave us a review on iTunes. I usually review, uh, not review, I usually read aloud any reviews given to us on iTunes. So if you want to hear uh, your review of our show uh, or just support us, uh, leave us a review there. Or we also have a coffee page and a Patreon page if you want to financially support us. But just uh, letting people know about your appreciation of the show, that is more than enough for us. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Leah, for playing. And uh, we'll hear from you next time on the Beer and Pretzel Podcast. Bye.